Okay, welcome back to another session of EO166. Uh, today we're going to talk about timers. Uh, for those of you that just uh, completed 164, I do apologize because uh, we do have to get everybody up to the um, uh, technology that we're using. Uh, some of you uh, may or may not have had exposure to the EO, uh, to the uh, 5000 software. But um, uh, so we are going to just do a quick review of, of uh, how that 5000 software works. So here we are, we're looking at the Control Logic controllers. The Control Logic controllers is a 32 bit based technology. When we're talking 32 bit based, what does that mean? It has 32 bit words in it. Okay. That means they're counting 0 to 31, right? So when, uh, when we're talking 32-bit word technology, we're talking a much larger word. We can get a much larger value out of our timers, right? We're going to be able to get, uh, if you guys remember the old 500, we were stuck at 32.767. And uh, that was the maximum value we could get out of our time. Now we've got some value way larger than that. Let's take a look, see what it says here. Um, let's go on into some of the details here of how the timer works and whatnot. Uh, so we, I guess we'll, I'll backtrack a little bit here and we'll, we'll step forward. So we're looking at um, you know the basic operations of the timer. Again, keeping in mind that the time on delay uh, uses three pieces. The um, uh, Accumulated uh, value, which is the value that is, is count timing. It's a 32-bit word, so it's a much larger value. We've got the preset, which is the point which the output's going to turn on, the done bit will turn on. And then we have three bits, or a, a control, one, one control word that's associated to it, which is called, um, uh, the three bits we use is called the done bit, DN, the timer timing bit, TT, and the last piece of that is the enable. En. When looking at that uh, diagram here, you can see, actually see they illustrate the en and the dn. What uh, when you're looking at this logic take place, you will see as soon as this input to this timer comes on here, the en turns on immediately. The done bit turns on once the preset and the accumulated values are equal. Here is the layout of the tags. So as you can see, the preset word, accumulator word, and then the en, tt, and done bits. Uh, keeping in mind, when, uh, when we are talking about words and bits, we are talking about preset and accumulator words. That means they are, what, 32 bits long. When we're talking bits, we're talking individual bits. This is one piece of a word, so it's one bit of a word, so en, TT and DDDN is nothing more than one single bit. Okay, so here we are. We're talking uh, the increment, uh, the, the tag name, for instance. Uh, the tag name, I didn't discuss that too much. The tag name, the only uh, specific point about the tag name in this application, in a timer application, is that the data type has to be defined as a timer. Okay? Why is that important? Because if you put a double integer data type in a timer, it's only going to recognize that timer as one word. It's not going to time. It's not going to know what to do. It's going to give you actually. It's going to give you some errors. It's going to say, "Hey, wrong, wrong data type for this instruction." The challenge that we have is we got to make sure when we're using timers, we can call it timer, but it's not a timer until we set that. Uh, um, data type to timer okay this is a critical path i'll have an illustration of that as well in the uh, in the lab portion so you'll see that so here we are looking at the preset at uh the, they're defining the preset as a number of time increments uh so this is uh the accumulate to reach this desired delay so when we, we put a value in there what they're saying here is when that accumulated value is accounting is, is timing up to reach that value when it reaches that value that done bit turns on for us. 
And keeping in mind, all this is in double integers, so we're very, very large. A very large number that we're gonna, we can attain if we need to. The last piece of this is the time base. Time base down here at the bottom is called, it's, it's always one millisecond. When you think millisecond, what do you guys think? I'm hoping 0 0.001, that's what I'm hoping. And make sure I got the decimal highlighted very well. That is a millisecond, 0 0.001. So to get one second, what do you guys believe a value I'd have to put in there? I'd have to put a value of 1,000 in there to get one second. Okay? Keep that in mind. It's going to be a challenge for us. We're going to be asked to come up with uh, 1.5 seconds. And if I wanted to do 1.5 seconds, how would I go about doing that? I would enter 1,500, right? Equals 1.5 seconds, right? So just make sure you're on top of that. That's kind of a key point there. So here we are, we're talking about the ACC. The accumulator again is a 32-bit uh, word, so we can get a very large value in there. So the accumulator value stops changing when the ACC value equals the preset value. How about them apples, huh? The enable bit. The enable bit, as I mentioned before, it does actually turn on every time that the timer is enabled. So every time we bring that input to the timer, we have this input here to our timer. Every time he is on, the dot en is on, okay? So if he's on, he's on. So if this timer, if this timer's got uh, all highlighted all the way to the timer, then that enable will be on. Does that make sense to everybody? Boy, I hope so. So that's the enable bit. Uh, enable bit can be pretty handy. If we're doing a seal in circuit, then you just do a quick illustration of that as well. I know some people like to do that way. You do a timer on here. That uh, EN will come in here and around here so you can do the uh, TON dot EN. So what happens is as soon as you close this contact here, it enables it turning on oops, excuse me, this contact here allowing the timer to stay on and continue to time so you do not have to hold this button to, uh, to maintain that, that information. Timer timing bit. So what do you think timer timing bit comes on? Well, it's kind of stated there, but just keep in mind, as long as that accumulator value is incrementing, that timer timing bit will be on, okay? Keep that in mind. Uh, so it's a pretty straightforward, uh, I uh, say intuitive uh, thought on that is that when it's timing, the timer timing bit is on. Okay, keep that one in mind. Okay. The next one is the done bit. The done bit is stated as equal to the preset. So whenever the accumulated value as it's incrementing, 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 hits that preset, when it equals that preset value, is at that very moment the done bit turns on. So this is, so we're starting out with the on delay timer and the timer on. So that's kind of what we've been discussing up to this point. So I'm, I'm not sure what <laughs> they break into the, this next piece here, but we're, we're moving along here. So this is what that timer looks like in the PLC code. So we're looking at uh, the pre timer, preset, and accumulated values. So the timer is, of course, the address of the timer. That's any, any timer value that we decided to call it. So say we decided to register or uh, call our, our timers Bob's timers or Sue's timers or Karen's timers. We have, uh, we would have that name here. Only key to that point is what? That value has to be a timer type or data type, excuse me. It has to be a timer data type. And again, we'll be discussing that further here in a minute. We find it under timer counter over here under the, this, this side over here, and we have the uh, timer on, T-O-N, is actually the button we're going to be used, clicking to, to create this timer. 
Okay. Here we're talking about, uh, we're showing actually showing the data type. Here's where we got to select that. So we create a new tag. This particular uh, timer they're calling it solenoid delay. So that's the name of this. So as you can see here, they used that tag name here. They gave it a description, which is not a bad description. Data type base, that's, uh, that just means it's going to be uh, a base data type. It's, it's, at this moment, doesn't, doesn't uh, describe too much. But the data type that I want to uh, focus on is data type timer, okay? This is where it is critical, okay? Whether you're taking an exam, whether you're doing a, a, an assignment in, in class, when you are creating your tags, and we will be doing a lot of creating your tags in, in class and lab, when we're developing timers, we got to make sure we get that right, the data type timer, okay? That's a critical path there. And here they're actually going to show us creating a timer. This is kind of a cool exercise here. So we're going in there, a new tag, look at that. Going to create a tag called solenoid something, solenoid timer or something like that, right? Delay, oh, delay, okay, all right. Minus the mass, much easier. So here we are, we're looking at uh, uh, a description they're putting in here, which is taking this person two days and three three weeks to get this damn thing done. So hopefully they can get a little faster here in the future. Um, so uh, did I miss something here? Did they put that as a time? I must have put it as a time because I, I, I missed that completely. Okay, yeah, so the data type they did select is timer. I missed that completely. So they did select the correct data type. This is where we would validate that information under type here. Make sure it is a, uh, excuse me, data type here. Come down there, you'll see it as a timer. And that is, that is the defining factor that I really wanted to, to fo focus on there. So here they're showing us a, a breakdown of a, a breakdown of the picture of what that would look like. Uh, so you've got the uh, with the input on, the enable is on. Um, it looks like to me that the accumulated value is incrementing. It's at 500 or 5,000 now. As soon as it reaches 10,000, which would be 10 seconds, the done bit will turn on, and that uh, that's that output will turn on there. Uh, so uh, again, they're just they're breaking down into different pieces here, noting that the, these components here are Boolean. This component here is considered a timer because it is got the data type timer. And then the, here is the pieces of that timer. So you got the preset accumulated value, noting that both of those are double integer words, meaning they're 32 bit words. And the last three pieces of this are bits indicated as Boolean. And then here they're going to give us a quick demonstration of how that, uh, when it reaches the value of 10,000, the done bit will turn on. I'm confident all of you have seen something to this level already. Um, again, we're focused again here showing some uh, of the data types. So we're, we're looking at this. We got the uh, double integers for the preset and the accumulated value and the booleans for the bits. Um, so here they're just they're just showing you some example of using a timer. I'm going to kind of flip through some of this pretty quick here because I think everybody here has got a pretty solid feel on this guy. Timer off, this is what I wanted to get to. Timer off delay. Timer off is not as intuitive as you think. Okay, this is the, uh, as well as pieces of uh, a PLC that trips students up, unfortunately. It trips us all up every once in a while. We anticipate some operation and bam, it doesn't work the way we anticipate. So let's take a look, see how this guy actually works. 
So when the, uh, the input for the timer off goes true, as you would expect here, the enable goes true, right? But what we don't expect is the timer timing starts to take place after we turn off the input. So we turn the input off. Now the start timer starts timing and once it's timed out, then it turns off. Likewise with the done bit. The done bit goes true the very moment we hit the, we, we make the, the timer go true and it stays true all the way through the timing process until what it done it times out at that very moment it turns off so that is the piece that gets a lot of students in trouble they uh they anticipate that done bit to work um to, to, to actually turn on after the uh the timer is done it turns off when the timer is done okay that's the big difference between timer on timer off okay the timer off turns on immediately, the done bit turns on immediately, and turns off at the end of time. So at the, it is at that very moment that the timer done bit turns off, that that output, uh, that that output actually um, turns off at the end of time, okay? okay. Oh, I hit the wrong button. So here, as you can see, it sets up exactly the same way. You got a timer value or a, uh, a, a timer uh, assigned address to it. Of, in this case, I did sample the timer off, a preset value and accumulated. Again, all those pieces are 32-bit words, and the uh, enabled, done, and timer bits are all individual bits. You can see that down here on the bottom here. Again, it's laid out. They're giving us a, kind of an example here. And here I actually want to show how it actually operates. So if you see that input turn on, that output turns on immediately. So if you know, if you caught that, this guy here turned on, the done bit turned on immediately and stayed on through the timing process. So that is uh, something I want you to be aware of. So when it's done timing, that's when, that's when that done bit turns off. So keep that in mind, okay? That is how that works. And here are some another aspect of it. Simulated timer control over a heating process. Okay, so here uh, there you're actually seeing when that input is on, or this guy here is on, for instance, you're seeing the timer on time. Now you're seeing the, uh, oh, excuse me, it, done, it got done timing. So now if they turn this guy off, hopefully here in a second, now you'll see the timer off actually start timing. That done bit is on right now, and this guy is running. So. Uh, last piece is uh, the retentive timer. Retentive timer works the same way as the timer on except it doesn't reset when the input goes off, okay? So what does that mean for us? It means that we're able to attain some value in that timer until we hit, what, a reset. And uh, you'll see here behind me is that uh, that's pretty much how it lays out. That reset has to be addressed, has to the same address as your timer to reset. And you will see kind of an illustration of how that will work here in a second. All the addressing is exactly the same as the timer on. And here's an example of how to use the timer, a uh, retentive timer. So as you can see here, it is uh, timing. And then you, uh, it, it stops timing when you, when you take away the input. And then it resets when you trigger this guy here. It resets it back to zero. Now the done bit is on, just like you expect it to be, and then they hit the reset, and it goes to zero, and then starts timing again immediately. So, so that is that process there. So 
cascading timers. I... Okay, that is uh, timers. Um, should uh, there will be a uh, also a video online to, to illustrate some of this, and we'll be playing around with them a little bit in lab as well, so we get a chance to. Uh, create a program using timers, both timer on, timer off, getting a hand, um, a, a better handle on how they work and, and uh, when to use them. So uh, uh, thank you for your time and we'll be seeing you guys soon.